Hey Dirt Magicians, Dee here. I am growing my first fall winter garden and I'm so excited to get started and Bree's helping me on how to be successful with it. That's right, here in the Pacific Northwest, hard frost sets in on November 11th. So our veggies need to be mostly grown by then and fully insulated. Wait, the vegetables have to be fully grown by the beginning of November? Yep. Once frost sets in, vegetable gardening becomes more about keeping the plants insulated and alive rather than actually growing. We will talk about insulation a little bit later in the video, but to start, for making a fall winter garden, we have to talk about plant selection. We want to select plants that are cold hardy. So these are vegetables that actually prefer cooler temperatures for growing in. And they include things like our leafy greens, so Swiss chard, kale, lettuces, the choys, the bok choys and the pak choys. It also includes the root vegetables, so carrots, turnips, radishes, beets. Another group of vegetables that like these cooler temperatures are what are called the brassica family of vegetables or cold crops. So these are broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, and lastly, some allium. So that's the garlic and onion family. So you can start green onions, and also garlic is great for a fall planting. Well, that's pretty easy to remember because it's really just four categories of vegetables, right? It's the leafy greens, all of the root vegetables, uh, cold crops, brassicas, right? The alliums, which is the onion and garlic, spring onions and garlic. Yes, remembering those four categories is way easier than trying to memorize an entire list. However, if you do want that more exhaustive list, I highly recommend looking at a planting chart to help you figure out what you can plant for the fall and the winter. There are hundreds of free guides online. If you want to find one specific to your region, then in the search bar, just put your region plus planting guide and it should show up. And let us know in the comments what you're planning on growing this fall winter. All right, we are ready for step two in designing our fall winter garden, which is deciding when to plant these fall veggies. Now, the answer to this is quite surprising. It's actually in July or August that you wanna be doing these plantings. What? That's really early. Why so early? Kind of, kind of depressing to plan fall in the summer when I'm having so much fun. It's because we are losing daylight hours every day at this time of year. So the further we get towards winter, the less daylight hours there are for photosynthesis. And also plants don't grow very much when it's below 10 degrees Celsius or 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And for where we are in the Northern Hemisphere, by the end of October, there's really just enough daylight hours to keep the plants alive in photosynthesis, maybe growing a little bit, but not very much. So this is why plants need to be started so much early, so into July and August. When you look at the back of your seed packet and it says days to maturity, it's usually referring to the period between spring and summer when the daylight hours are getting longer and longer. For us here in Vancouver, June 21st has over 16 hours of daylight. Whereas when we talk about planting from the summer into the fall, by the end of October, we only have nine hours of daylight. So that's way less time for photosynthesis to occur. Interesting. So fall winter gardening is really about growing the plants in the summer and then keeping them alive in the fall, right? So how would I know which plants to first start growing in July and then in August? This all depends on days to maturity for the plants. So the longer days to maturity, the earlier in the summer I start them. For example, your carrots, which often are 90 to 100 days to maturity, I will start kind of near the beginning of July. And then other plants that are in the 70 to 90 day range, I will also start in July. And so those include things like our coal crops, the brassicas, the kale, the cabbage, the broccoli, the cauliflower, as well as things as Swiss chard, or lettuce heads, for example. And then in August, you can start things like the pak choys, the arugula, the radishes, the beets that have shorter days to maturity. Now, when I say start, I'm referring to seeding. So if you buy a transplant of a broccoli or a cauliflower, for example, you could put that in the ground in August. There are also a few varieties of vegetables that only are 30 days to maturity. So a couple of varieties of radishes or pak choy, which we can start in September. 
If you're late to the game in terms of seeding, you could also just do baby salad greens because they don't have to get very big. We have listed when we started our fall vegetables in the description box below if you wanna to refer to that. And don't make this mistake that I see all the time. If you wanna grow a lot of lettuce or a lot of pak choy, make sure you stagger the plantings so that you don't have to eat like 10 lettuces all at once. Okay, Brie, but there's something I'm really confused about. Most of these plants that we're starting need cooler conditions, but yet we're starting them at the peak of the summer. So how's that gonna work? That's a great question, Dee, and is one of the trickier parts of starting a garden for the fall and winter, which is keeping the plants cool when we're starting them in the heat of the summer. Which brings me to step three in designing your fall winter garden, finding shady locations for those plants to grow. So my first tip for planning for shade in the garden for the fall winter vegetables actually has nothing to do with shade. It's actually to start your seeds indoors. And that's because it's usually a lot cooler in our houses that are temperature controlled in the summer versus just in the heat of the sun in our garden. And then when we do go to transplant, it's usually a little bit later into the season, but we're still gonna wanna plant them somewhere that has partial shade. One of the best and easiest techniques to plant in partial shade is to plant underneath some of your tall vining plants like your cucumbers and your tomatoes. And then come the fall, when they're being pulled out, your fall vegetables will be ready for fall sun as it's a lot cooler at that point. This also works by planting them under deciduous trees as in the fall, the leaves will fall, again, giving you more sun for those veggies. Oh, genius. I love working with what nature already has set out for us. And dirt magicians, you can give us some natural love by hitting the like button if we're giving you value. If you struggle with having access to shade in your garden, the other recommendation I have, and you should still follow this even if you find shadier areas, is to water those plants more. And even in the middle of the day, if it's a really hot day, as evaporation is actually a cooling process for the plants. Now this is especially important right after transplanting when your veggie roots are getting used to their soil environment and they may not be as effective at using water. And yes, I do remember that you had to give me quite a few reminders to be watering consistently right after we transplanted for a few days. And when I did, boy, it made a huge difference. And on that note of transplanting, do, do I have to do anything to the soil before we transplant? Yes, bringing us to step four for your fall winter vegetable garden, preparing the soil. Now, because our summer vegetables took nutrients out of the soil in their plant growth and then we harvested them, we need to add nutrients back in. Now, I simply do this by adding a compost and I wanna make sure that it has a minimum of 2% nitrogen as nitrogen is the nutrient needed in the largest quantity often by most of our plants. So we can find out if our compost has 2% nitrogen as it's going to be the first number on the bag. So I like to add a couple inches of compost into the soil and then come late September when biological activity starts to slow down in the soil, which means the soil is not decomposing and releasing nutrients, I like to add a boost of nutrients with fish fertilizer. And when you're purchasing a fish fertilizer, you wanna make sure that of the three numbers on the front of the container, the first and the third number have a minimum number of two. And that's 2% for both nitrogen as well as potassium. If you want to learn more about plant nutrients and soil health, then you should check out our mini course. I studied soil science and I've worked with lots of farmers in nutrient management plans. So this course breaks down the complexities of soil for a gardener so you can have your healthiest soil yet. So check the description box below to get a look at that mini course. The other component to tending to the soil for the fall is adding mulch. Now you wanna make sure that your plants are fully germinated before you do this and it actually serves three distinct purposes for our fall winter vegetables. Firstly, it retains more moisture in the soil, which is especially important for the leafy greens, which actually need more moisture than a lot of the other vegetables. Secondly, it insulates the roots of the plants in the heat of the summer. And then thirdly, it insulates the roots of the plants when it gets really cold and keeps the soil warmer. Now, this year, Dee and I started using straw mulch, which we love, and have linked the one that we use in the description box below. But a great free option for the fall is actually leaves. Haha, <laughs> so true. I know lots of gardeners that just drive around their neighborhood collecting everybody else's leaves because leaves are garden gold. And uh, incidentally, Brie, I think a lot of them are your students. Now, speaking of insulating, 
how do we keep the veggie plants warm when the frost actually hits? Great question, Dee, which brings us to step five in our fall winter vegetable garden, which is insulation. Now there are two main principles for insulating the garden. The first one is that we want our insulating cover that goes over the vegetables to be clear. This allows photosynthesis to occur, but will also trap heat in from the sun. And then the second principle is that the thicker the material is, the better the insulation will be. So with those two principles in mind, you can get really creative with how you're going to insulate your garden. Now, more advanced gardeners will use things like cold frames and greenhouses, but this is quite expensive. It will give them veggies all winter long. When we're just starting out, we don't have the budget for that. There's a few cheaper options we can do instead. One option is to use row cover, which is this sheer white material that we can put over our plants. It is insulating and it traps a bit of heat, but because it's very breathable, it also is not going to trap as much heat as something that's impermeable like plastic. While it may not be the best insulator, it does double as an insect protection for things like cabbage moth, which works not only in the fall, but also in the summer. Now there are many ways to use plastic. I've seen some gardeners get really creative and create PVC hoops and then add a plastic sheet over top. But Dee, I love what you started with these little domes that you got at the dollar store. They're super cheap and very effective. These domes are only really gonna work for our smaller plants like our pok choys and our lettuces, but it's a great beginner's way to get started. That plastic is really going to be insulating, it's going to trap heat. And then what I love is at the top, you can actually open it to allow air in. Yes, I love those domes. I learned about them from a gardener in Groville and they've been such a gift in the garden. But Brie, in this entire video, you didn't touch upon one really important fall vegetable, garlic. That's right, Dee, and that's because a lot of the growing guidelines don't really apply for garlic, which is why we've created a whole video on how to grow garlic, which you can find here. And we'll see you next time.